white, American, whatever. You need to see the history. Some of it is painful, but it's what it is. It's going to open your eyes about the other side of an American founding father and champion of liberty. Thomas, Thomas Jefferson kept slaves at his Monticello estate in Virginia. And you can learn more this fall at Fair Park. Welcome to Dallas City Council member Kevin Felder, uh, playing a key role in getting the exhibit to the uh, Museum of African American History. And welcome too to Gail Jessup White, who works at Monticello, is a descendant of the Hemings family and of Thomas Jefferson. If, if somebody says, tell me about your ancestors, which one comes first, Sally Hemings or Thomas Jefferson? Wow. So at this moment, Sally Hemings comes first. Mm -hmm. And that's because at, uh, this past weekend at Monticello, we opened a new exhibition uh, devoted in part to her life called The Life of Sally Hemings. She was a very interesting person um, about whom we know little. However, what we do know we are sharing with our guests, and I'm happy to tell you as much as I can about her today. Yeah, and, and this is, uh, uh, exhibit is coming to uh, the Dallas Museum, the African American History Museum uh, yes. as well. What, what lesson do you hope is imparted to particularly young people? Well, I, I think that um, not much of this is, is, is taught in the history books, not much of it is taught in the public school system. And so I think it is very important that uh, students get an opportunity to explore the life of Sally Hemings, uh, particularly for, to the fact that uh, Thomas Jefferson was a sitting president and owned 607 slaves. Right. And so that's very important. That's a telling story. That's an American story. Uh, she was, when she began a, a relationship, became a, a concubine, I guess the term was back then, with Thomas Jefferson, she was a teenager, a young teenager. Well, here's the full story. Um, Sally Hemings went to Paris to accompany Thomas Jefferson's youngest daughter. Her nickname was Polly. And when she accompanied her, um, she was, in fact, 13, 14 years old. Um, the age of legitimacy are, uh, at that point was 10. So it's shocking to us now, when I say mm -hmm. legitimacy, I mean when one could actually have a relationship, right. marriage. Um, so 13, 14, 15 years old, um, to have a, a connection with an older man would not have been uncommon at that time. So yes, um, according to her son, one of her sons, one of his sons as well, Thomas Jefferson's, they started their connection when she was in Paris accompanying Polly. Um, and at that time, they were there two years, Sally Hemings was there two years with Jefferson. When it was time for him to return to Paris, he was there as ambassador, um, she wanted to stay in Paris where she would have been free. Jefferson wanted Sally Hemings to return to Virginia with him, and she demurred, according to her son. So what she did was she negotiated with one of the most influential men of his era. She basically cut a deal to return <coughs> to Virginia with Thomas Jefferson. She negotiated with him the freedom of her unborn children and privileges for herself. So that's really, that speaks to her, to the kind of person right. she was, to her confidence, to her strength. Absolutely. To her intellect. I cannot wait. And this exhibit, we need to tell folks, unfortunately, we run out of time. What an amazing story, and you can learn so much more. Uh, and it uh, opens at the uh, Museum of uh, African American History in Dallas. Slavery at Jefferson's Monticello, September 22nd. You can find a link, runs to the end of the year. You can find a link with more information on fox4news.com. Thank you both so much. We're so excited to, uh, to learn more. Thank, Thank you. you.